If you're an adventurer, you know the anxiety that comes with running out of water in the middle of a tour. The last thing you want is dehydration when you're miles away from home. Fontus is a self-filling water bottle that allows you to plan your adventures without having to worry about heavy water loads or where to find the next river or the next gas station. So a device that magically pulls water out of the air. I wanted to create a bottle that would never run dry. A bottle that fills itself. For me, it's like magic because out of thin air and sun, we are bringing this bottle to fill itself with drinkable water. A bottle that gives you the freedom to go anywhere. And yes, it's complete bullshit. But it's not stopped it from being given about a third of a million dollars and featured all over the place. So imagine you have a glass of water and you put a seal on the top. The water will establish a vapor pressure. Basically, some of that water will evaporate into the air and you'll reach a constant value, an equilibrium, where the water is evaporating at the same rate it's condensing. And whatever the value is, is called 100% humidity. And it is temperature dependent. In fact, let's take this for a one liter pot bottle. So if I were to condense all of the gas in this bottle, it would give me about one gram of air. And if that air had 100% humidity at room temperature, then condensing all of that would give me about 20 milligrams of water. That's about one drop of water. Or if it was 50% humidity, I'd only get about 10 milligrams of water, about half a drop. And if it was 100% humidity on a bloody hot day, say 35 Celsius or 100 Fahrenheit, that doubles to about two drops of water per liter of air. And if it was at freezing point, it would only give me about a quarter of a drop per liter of air. Eh, as odd as it might sound, there is still a pretty reasonable humidity even over ice. So if you wanted to get one liter of water from 100% humidity air, how much air would you need? Well, at room temperature, a 100% harvest of one liter of air gets you about 20 milligrams, one drop of water. So a 100% harvest of 50 liters would get me about one gram. And a thousand grams per liter or kilo of water means that you would have to harvest with 100% efficiency 50,000 liters of air to get you one liter of water. You would have to harvest all of the air from something about the size of a tanker truck to get one liter of water. So how would you actually go about this harvest? Well, if you want to reduce the amount of water in the air, basically you've got to cool it. At which point the water starts condensing out on the cool surface, but you need to take a lot of energy out of the system. You need to cool the system a lot to get that water out. I mean, the concept of getting water out of air by cooling has been known for quite some time. It's called a dehumidifier. Question is, if I wanted to get a liter of water out of a dehumidifier, how long would I have to run it off the power from a solar panel about this size? I mean, there's a simple way to look at this. Dehumidifiers typically have ratings on how much water they will pull out of the air for one kilowatt hour. And it's typically one to two liters. So let's not quibble, let's just say it's one liter per kilowatt hour. And they want to run all of this off a solar panel. Yeah that size. So how many kilowatts can a solar panel that size generate? So you just put the solar panels in perspective. This is about a quarter of a square meter and generates about 40 watts. So a square meter will generate about 160 watts. And if they're lucky, the solar panel that they're going to use to run their Peltier effect dehumidifier is about 15 watts. Well, let's just take a one square meter solar panel, which will generate about 150 watts or 0.15 kilowatts. So if we have an hour of hard sunlight, that's going to generate about 0.15 kilowatt hours. So under good conditions, a solar panel like this running a dehumidifier is going to pull one liter of water out of the air in about six hours. However, their solar panel, if you're lucky, is about one tenth the size of this square meter. 
So it would take about 60 hours of sunlight to get one liter of water, which in practice, given that the sun is only in the sky for about half of the day, means that in real time, it's going to take about one week to get one liter of water. So yeah, this device works on the premise that it's sunny, that it's warm, and there's going to be high humidity. Apart from places where it's sunny and have a high humidity, eh, kind of a recipe for thunderstorms. You know, as the hot, moist air rises, it condenses and falls as rain. A more traditional and less contrived way of amazingly getting water out of the air. For me, it's like magic because out of thin air and sun, we are bringing this bottle to fill itself with drinkable water. So, the freedom to go anywhere with this device doesn't include cold places, because <laughs> cold places don't tend to have much water in the air. Places like mountains or, or dry places like deserts. It doesn't include cloudy places where there is high humidity. So in summary, the device will work fantastically anywhere where there's lots of rainfall and really won't work anywhere else. It's kind of like a flashlight that only works when the sun's up. In fact, damn, now that I think about it, that is a Kickstarter worthy idea. But in principle, there is nothing wrong with using a solar powered Peltier effect dehumidifier to get water. But then again, in principle, there's nothing wrong with selling a pine cone as an organic car jack. Tired of all that physical labor and jacking up your car? All that energy inefficiency of carrying a heavy metal jack around with you all of the time? Why not use the power of the sun to do all of the work for you? Why not use what nature gives you? It's compact, it's comfortable, it's small and easy to use. It has no complicated operating manuals. It fits in your backpack. All you have to do is place the pine cone under your car and wait for mother nature to jack your car for you. It's a brilliant idea. It's one design award from artists. We've been working on Fontus for a couple of years now here at the University of Applied Arts in Vienna and it's been featured on all of these sites. So yeah, it's bullshit. And the core of it is you have to take a lot of energy out of the system to condense water. But why is that? Why do you need to take a lot of energy out of gaseous water to turn it into a liquid? Well, maybe the easiest place to start here is with boiling water. So if you wanna turn water at 100 degrees Celsius into steam at 100 degrees Celsius, it takes a huge amount of energy. You basically have to put enough energy into the system to break every single hydrogen bond in that water. And likewise, if you want to reverse that process, you have to take an awful lot of energy out of the system. That's just the way it is. A phase change in water takes a huge amount of energy. So some ballpark numbers, if I take one kilo of ice, that's one of these one litre bottles full of ice, ice at freezing point, and I put into it 340,000 joules of energy. That's just enough to turn it from ice at zero degrees into water at zero degrees, a phase change. If I give you another 340,000 joules, it's enough to increase the temperature of that water from freezing point water to water at about 80 degrees Celsius, about four fifths of the way to boiling point. Now, guess how much energy it takes to turn one kilogram of water at 100 degrees Celsius into steam at 100 degrees Celsius. 2,300,000 joules. But then again, you probably know this already. If you take your pan of water and put it on the stove and put the stove on a constant heat setting, the heat flow into the pan is basically constant. But you know that the water heats up to a boiling point in a relatively short time. But then, even though the heat flow is the same, it takes a long time to boil off all of that water. Now that cuts both ways. If you want to take the water from the vapor phase and want to condense it, you have to take a huge amount of energy out of the system. You have to cool the system. And that's actually less efficient than trying to heat it. That's a um, second law of thermodynamics thing. There are no free lunches. 
Anyway, turns out you can calculate exactly how much energy you have to remove from one kilo of steam, one kilo of water vapor. It's mostly the same in both cases, because in both cases, you have to take all of the energy out of the system for making all those hydrogen bonds of condensing it from steam into water. So you have to extract about 2 million joules of energy from the system for every kilo of water. A number that, when you understand it, just kills this idea off the bat. So the energy you have to extract is comparable of taking 5 litres of water and heating them up from freezing point to boiling point. And you have to do that all from a solar panel this size. Now, taking energy out of the system, cooling it, is meant to be done by a Peltier effect device, a, a rather neat little solid state device that I've played with previously on this channel. You pass current through it and one side gets hot and the other side gets cold. And the hot side always gets hotter than the cold side gets colder. But basically, if you want to pull 2 million joules out of the system, you've got to generate at least 2 million joules with this device. It's a state function. It doesn't matter how quickly or slowly you do it. If you want to condense vapor water into liquid water, you have to pull about 2 million joules of energy out of that system somehow to get it into about one kilo of liquid water. Now let's take a look at the size of the solar panel they intend to run this off of. And I'm going to be generous and say it's about 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters. That's about a square foot or give or take about one tenth of a square meter. And we know from earlier that our meter squared solar panel generates about 150 watts of power. So assuming it's sunny, <laughs> this will give them about 15 watts of power, 15 joules per second. And how many joules do we need to get out of this to extract one liter of water? Oh, but for those of you who still want to give these guys the benefit of the doubt, let me just tell you this, that it turns out that you can buy off the shelf a Peltier Effect dehumidifier. Basically, it's exactly what they're proposing here. The only thing that they're doing different is they're powering theirs off a solar panel. I think you're ready for this. Well, I mean, we've already sort of established that their solar panel is going to provide about 15 watts of power. And a 15 watt dehumidifier working on 100% humidity air can pull out about 170 grams of water per day. That's about 0.17 liters of water per day. It would take about a week to fill a one liter water bottle. I mean, hell, even the power hall version of this, which would take two paddles this size to run, only pulls in about 0.7 litres per day. Or looked at another way, you could use that 1.7 or so kilowatt hours that you use to condense that 0.7 litres of water and use it to run a reverse osmosis kit, which could purify about 500 kilograms, half a tonne, of water. So you really have to ask yourself if using a regular dehumidifier says that it can only condense about 0.7 liters of water per day while using about 70 watts, how is it that the inventors claim that their device can pull about half a liter of water out of the air in just one hour? Which means that they're about a factor of a hundred up on what a regular dehumidifier can do, and also well into the thermodynamically impossible range. But hell, Kerry Flynn, fellow of HuffPost Tech. Thanks for believing in Qantas. Or Denise Chow, SciTech editor of Live Science. Thanks for believing in Qantas. Or Julie Shapiro of Time Magazine. Thanks for believing in Qantas. Or the James Dyson Foundation. Don't let such minor technicalities, such as what's being claimed is actually thermodynamically impossible, get in the way of you promoting this bullshit. If you're an adventurer, you know the anxiety that comes with running out of water in the middle of a tour. So in summary, if it's cloudy, you're going to die of thirst. The last thing you want is dehydration when you're miles away from home. If it's cold and there ain't much water in the air, you're gonna die of thirst. Pontus is a self-filling water bottle. 
If it's hot and dry, you're gonna die of thirst. That allows you to plan your adventures without having to worry about heavy water loads or where to find the next river or the next gas station. And if you only have one of these bottles, you're gonna die of thirst. But other than that, great idea guys, love the design. Well worth the third of a million dollars. Yeah, people put a third of a million dollars into this crap. Incidentally, my campaign to get a decent thermal camera, which would have been pretty reasonable for some of the heat flow demonstrations in this video, is on about 13k, which is fine. That's more than enough to get some very nice thermal kit. And I graciously thank all of those who contributed to it. And if you liked what you saw here and want to promote this sort of thing, if you want to counter the bullshit merchants and the Yahtzee science communicators who promote them, if you want to see more real, scientifically literate media from a real scientist and badass, Patreon really is the way to do it. It's utterly transformed my position. Thank you.